So what are the best ways to fix blurry photos? It can be really frustrating to take photos only to realize that they're blurry later on. It's a waste of time and it's even a waste of money. I can heavily relate because I've been there more times than I want to admit, but the good news is that I've found two powerful ways to fix blurry photos through 12 years of being a professional photographer. We'll get into that in this video. In the end, don't you just wanna love your photography? Welcome to the channel, my name is David Johnson. On this channel, we provide you with the best tips and tools to help you level up the success and love for your photography, like fixing blurry photos. So if you're into that, hit the subscribe button right now. Why are you getting blurry photos? The answer is probably because you're focusing on the wrong subject or the wrong part of your frame when you're in the field. And this can be fixed with two specific ways that I'm gonna show you. Really, the way to do this is using manual focus. And if you don't know what manual focus is, is basically you're controlling the focus ring on your camera to help you decide where exactly you wanna focus. You're not relying on your camera to focus where it wants to focus. So the way you do this is basically on any lens, there's a little AF, MF icon, and you just switch that to MF for manual focus. If your lens doesn't have one of these, you can just switch it on the menu in your camera itself to allow you to focus manually. Now, think of manual as like you're driving a car. If you've ever been a student driver, you know that somebody else controlling the pedals and the steering wheel can be a little bit confusing and kind of annoying at times because you're not in full control. The same thing happens with your camera. You wanna be in full control of everything, so getting you over into manual is really, really key to control everything that's going on. So, the number one way that I say to fix 95% of the problems of your focusing is focusing with an aperture or f-stop of f16. What this means is your lens is focusing with a really narrow opening within the lens so that light is having trouble penetrating that and getting into the lens. This also allows your camera to have a really deep area of focus within the entire frame. So F16 is usually where I go for any large landscape scene to focus into the frame. What you're going to do here is focus just below a thirds of the way into the frame. So if I put this photo up, we have the rule of thirds grid, which is just a compositional guideline, and you focus just below a third of the way into the frame. You can find a rock, you can find a log, you can find a ripple of water, and manually focus to that point, take a shot, and everything into infinity is going to be within acceptable focus. This is called hyperfocal distance. It's a big fancy word to basically mean focus just below a third of the way into the frame. Everything else will be in focus when you're using something like F16. The second way of getting tack sharp focus is using something called focus stacking. If you don't know what focus stacking is, it's a way of taking multiple frames throughout the scene that you're shooting when you're using an aperture of, let's say, f8 or lower. Focus stacking is really reserved for big wide angle scenes where you have a massive foreground that's extremely close to the end of your lens and a landscape that's really far away in the distance. Because if you're using something like f8, even f14, that is going to be really difficult to get into absolute sharp focus because they're at such great distances from one another. You can take one shot at focusing to the foreground and then the next shot focusing to the background or the mountains or tree or whatever is in the distance and that you are sure that you're getting everything in focus when you combine those later on. Now, if you want to know how to combine those later on, you can click the card that's showing up on your screen right now, and I have a full tutorial on how to do focus stacking in Photoshop. Now, the other way that you wanna do focus stacking is if you're doing something like a small scene and you have a lot of areas of focus that are right in front of your camera. If you're using a really wide aperture like F2, F4, something like that is gonna have a really shallow depth of field. So when you're doing this, you take like 
four, five, six, seven, eight shots, and you're focusing to each little level that's going into your focus plane for your subject, and then you're combining those later in post-processing as well. Again, here's another tutorial for focus stacking using it that way. You know, focus doesn't have to be hard. You can start really simplistically just focusing a third of the way into the frame and you'll be good to go for 95% of those shots and the other 5% you can use something like focus stacking to do. These are guaranteed to get you sharp focus in all of your landscape photography. Hey, and if you want, here's a playlist of other Photoshop options for you to learn for your landscape photography. And here's a video that I think you'll like as well if you're not into Photoshop. Thanks so much and remember to subscribe and hit the like button.